Rachel Milberg, Molly O'Rourke, Rourke, Travis Lumpkin, Evan Schatz, and Lauren Overman. So, Mr. President, I, I want to thank all of them for their hard work and all Senator Collins' staff as well, as well as uh, our Chairman, Senator Inouye, and I uh, look forward to the passage of this bill this evening. Thank you, Mr. President. I yield the floor. I suggest the absence of a quorum. Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Akaka. Mr. President. The Majority Leader. I should ask consent to call the quorum be terminated. Without objection. Mr. President, we would yield back the t whatever time was left here with the, on the Democratic side. With a, without objection, the time is yielded back on the Democratic side. Mr. President, we're going to continue to work tomorrow on the DOD authorization bill. You, everyone has been told by the two managers of this bill they have amendments they should offer them. We're working on the energy and water bill. Uh, we, we're making progress on that with Senators Feinstein and Mar Alexander. We have some nominations we're working on. The next vote will be 5.30 p.m. on November 28th. We'll be in session tomorrow. I deal back the Republican time. All time is yielded back. The question is, is there a sufficient second? There appears to be there is. The question is on the adoption of the conference report to accompany H.R. 2112. The clerk will call the roll. Mr. Akaka, Mr. Alexander, Ms. Ayotte. Mr. Barrasso, Mr. Baucus, Mr. Beckage, Mr. Bennett, Mr. Bingaman. Mr. Blumenthal, Mr. Blunt, Mr. Bozeman, Mrs. Boxer, Mr. Brown of Massachusetts, Mr. Brown of Ohio, Mr. Burr, Ms. Cantwell, Mr. Cardin, Mr. Carper, Mr. Casey, Mr. Chambliss, Mr. Coates, Mr. Coburn, Mr. Cochran, Ms. Collins, Mr. Conrad, Mr. Coons, Mr. Corker, Mr. Cornyn, Mr. Crapo, Mr. Dement, Mr. Durbin, Mr. Enzi, Mrs. Feinstein, Mr. Franken, Mrs. Gillibrand, Mr. Graham, Mr. Grassley, Mrs. Hagen, Mr. Harkin, Mr. Hatch, Mr. Heller, Mr. Hoven, Mrs. Hutchison, Mr. Inhoff, Mr. Noway, Mr. Isaacson, 
Mr. Johans, Mr. Johnson of Wisconsin, Mr. Johnson of South Dakota, Mr. Carey, Mr. Kirk, Ms. Klobuchar, Mr. Cole, Mr. Kyle, Ms. Landrieu, Mr. Lautenberg, Mr. Leahy, Mr. Lee, Mr. Levin, Mr. Lieberman, Mr. Luger, Mr. Manchin, Mr. McCain, Mrs. McCaskill, Mr. McConnell, Mr. Menendez, Mr. Merkley, Ms. Mikulski, Mr. Moran, Ms. Murkowski, Mr. Nelson of Nebraska, Mr. Nelson of Florida, Mr. Paul, Mr. Portman, Mr. Pryor, Mr. Reed of Rhode Island, Mr. Reed of Nevada, Mr. Risch, Mr. Roberts, Mr. Rockefeller, Mr. Rubio, Mr. Sanders, Mr. Schumer, Mr. Sessions, Mrs. Shaheen, Mr. Shelby, Ms. Snow, Ms. Stabenow, Mr. Tester, Mr. Thune, Mr. Toomey, Mr. Udall of Colorado, Mr. Udall of New Mexico, Mr. Vitter, Mr. Warner, Mr. Webb, Mr. Whitehouse, Mr. Wicker, Mr. Wyden. Senators. Senators voting in the affirmative. Alexander, Bingaman, Blunt, Conrad, Durbin, Feinstein, Johans, Murray, Pryor, Schumer, Udall of Colorado, Udall of New Mexico, and Wicker. Mr. Reed of Nevada, aye. Senators voting in the negative. Mr. Cardin? Mr. Cardin. Aye. Senators voting in the negative. Corker, Dement, Heller, Isaacson, and Toomey. Mr. Brown of Massachusetts, aye.
Mr. Blumenthal, aye. Mrs. Hutchison? Mrs. Hutchison, aye. Mr. Kyle. Mr. Kyle. Aye. Mr. Rubio. No. Mr. Hatch, no. Mr. Franken, aye. Mr. Brasso, Mr. Brasso, no. Mr. Harkin, Mr. Harkin, aye. Mr. Webb, aye. Mrs. Boxer, aye. Mr. Fitter, no. Mr. Cole, aye. Aye. Mr. Moran, aye. Mr. Lee? Mr. Lee, no. Mr. Wyden? Mr. Wyden, aye. Johnson, South Dakota, aye. Mr. Carper, aye. Mrs. Hagan, aye. Mr. Thune, no. Okay. Mr. Nelson of Nebraska, aye. Mr. Sanders, aye. Mr. Baucus, Mr. Baucus, aye.
Cornyn. Um, Mr. Cornyn, no. Mr. Reed of Rhode Island, aye. Mr. Lautenberg? Mr. Lautenberg? Mr. Lautenberg, aye. Mr. McCain? Mr. McCain, no. Mr. Carey? Mr. Carey, aye. Mr. Casey, aye. Ms. Cantwell, Ms. Cantwell, aye. Ms. Cochran, Mr. Cochran, aye. Mr. Manchin, aye. Mr. Hoven, aye. Mr. Johnson of Wisconsin, no. Mr. Shelby, no. Ms. Mikulski, aye. Mr. Bozeman, aye. Mr. Nelson, Mr. Nelson of Florida, aye. Ms. Collins, aye. Mr. Paul. Mr. Paul, no. Mr. Levin. Mr. Levin, aye. Mr. Graham, aye. Ms. Ayotte. Ms. Ayotte, no. Mr. Brown of Ohio, aye. Mr. Portman, no. Mr. Lieberman, aye, thanks. Mr. Enzi, no. Mr. McConnell. Mr. McConnell, aye. Stabenow, aye. <laughs> Mr. Kirk, no. Mr. Roberts, Mr. Roberts, aye. Mr. Coburn, no. <laughs> Mr. Burr, no. Mr. Chambliss, no. 
Ms. Klobuchar, aye. Mr. Grassley, no. Mr. Menendez, aye. Ms. Leahy, Mr. Leahy, aye. Mr. Tester, aye. Ms. Snow, Ms. Snow, aye. Murkowski, aye. Mr. Merkley, Mr. Merkley, aye. This is Gillibrand, aye. Mr. Beckage, aye. Mr. Kaka, Mr. Kaka, aye. Mr. Rockefeller, Mr. Rockefeller, aye. Mr. Coates, no. Ms. Landrew, Ms. Landrew, aye. Mr. Coons, aye. Mr. Inhoff, no. Mr. Bennett, Mr. Noway,
McCaskill. Aye. White House. Mr. Sessions, no. Mr. Warner, aye.
Mr. Crapo, no. Mr. Risch, no. Are there any other senators wishing to vote or to change their vote? If no, on this vote, the yeas are 70, the nays are 30. Under, under the previous order requiring 60 votes for the adoption of this conference report, the, con the conference report is adopted. To reconsider that. Without objection. Mr. President. Mr. Senator, President. The Senator from Michigan. Mr. President, if I could have, if I could have order, Senator. The Senate will come in to order. The Senate will come to order. Mr. President. The Senator from Michigan. Uh, there's a number of people, number of senators here, who want to offer their amendments, make them pending tonight, and that's fine with us. Uh, it's not in order. <laughs> It's not in order. Will the senators please take their conversations out of the chamber? The senator from Michigan. There's a number of senators who have amendments that they are able to call up tonight, make them pending, and then set them aside. And then if they have speeches, I would suggest that they withhold speeches until everybody who has amendments here can offer them and set them aside so that we can allow people to leave and then have the speeches come if there are speeches tonight after anybody who wants to make their amendment pending has that opportunity. That's the process I would suggest. I haven't, uh, and, and Senator McCain is uh, uh, supportive of that process. So that's my suggestion that uh, the chair recognize people as the chair wishes, call up your amendment, set it aside, let the next person call up the amendment, set it aside, and if there's any speeches, that they come after everybody who is recognized to call up their amendments have that opportunity. Now, one other thing. This relates to what will happen hopefully tonight and tomorrow, and that is that we're going to try to clear amendments if we can tonight and tomorrow. We'll be here at 9 o'clock. And we are going to try to clear as many amendments as we can uh, because we've got to make progress on this bill. And I just want to thank Senator McCain for all he's uh, doing to help that process and help our leaders. The Senator from Arizona. I understand we have a couple amendments already uh, from uh, Senator Cardin. Uh, I believe uh, 1073 and 1188 is. Uh, I, I, I see the Senator from Louisiana, she was, but may, he's. Also, probably ready to for his amendments. Is that correct? Are his two amendments cleared on your side? You know, uh, we've cleared one. I, I should, we should momentarily. Momentarily. Oh, all right. The senator from California. President, I ask unanimous consent that the pending amendments be set aside in order to call up amendments uh, 1125 and 1126. I further ask that Senator Leahy, Durbin, and Udall. 
of Colorado be listed as co-sponsors of both amendments. Is there objection? Without objection, the clerk Thank will, you very will much. report. Senator from California, Mrs. Feinstein, proposes on block amendments numbered 1125 and 1126. Mr. President, Senator from Colorado. Mr. President, I'd ask uh, unanimous consent that the pending amendment be set aside and amendment 1107 be called up. Is there objection? Without objection, the clerk will report. Senator from Colorado, Mr. Udall, proposes an amendment number 1107. Strike subtitle D of Title 10 and insert the following. Subtitle D, Detainee Matters, Section 1031. Review of authority of the armed forces of the United States. President, I'd ask uh, unanimous consent that the reading amendment be waived. Without objection. The Senator from Louisiana. Thank you, Mr. President. I ask to uh, make pending or to set aside the pending amendments and to call up amendment number 1115, and I ask to make it pending on behalf of myself, Senator Snow, and I appreciate the co-sponsorship of Senator Shaheen, Brown, and Kerry. If we could call up the amendment. Is there objection? Without objection, the clerk will report. Senator from Louisiana, for herself and Ms. Snow, proposes an amendment number 1115. At the end, at the I following. ask unanimous consent to dispense with the reading. And um, Mr. President, this is an amendment that would reauthorize two Without of the most objection. important research programs for the small businesses of this country. I thank you. Mr. President. Mr. President, I ask unanimous consent to set aside the pending amendment and call up my amendment number 1197. Is there objection? Without objection, the clerk will report. Senator from Minnesota, Mr. Franken, proposes an amendment number 1197. At the end of subtitle E of Title 8. Mr. The President, I ask that further reading of the amendment. Without waived. objection. Thank you. I yield the floor. Mr. President. The Senator from Maryland. Uh, yes, and I have sent the pending amendment be set aside so that I may offer first uh, Amendment 1073. Is there objection? Without objection, the clerk will report. Senator from Maryland, Mr. Cardin, for himself and Ms. Mikulski, proposes an amendment number 1073. Yes, that must be considered a reading of the amendment. Without objection. Uh, Mr. President, I also ask consent that that amendment now be set aside so I can offer Amendment 1188. Is there objection? Without objection, the clerk will report. Senator from Maryland, Mr. Cardin, for himself and others, proposes an amendment number 1188. Yes, unanimous consent that be considered a reading of the amendment. Without objection. Mr. President, uh, I don't see anyone else on the floor. Oh, I'm sorry, there is one. Uh, I, I, I yield to the chairman and committee. Senator from Michigan. Mr. President, on 1188, I believe that this amendment has been cleared and that we can actually pass no. I understand that this amendment has been cleared on both sides and we could actually pass 1188 tonight, right now. And I'm just wondering if... Uh, Is there further debate on the amendment? If not, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. That's 1188. That's correct. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes do have it. The amendment is agreed to. Senator Levin and Senator McCain. Move to lay that on the table. Without objection. The Senator from Alaska. Mr. President, I ask uh, consent that the current amendment be set aside. Mr. President, I rise to call up amendment number 114 to Senate Bill 1867, the National Defense Office. Is there objection? Without objection, the clerk will report. Senator from Alaska, Mr. Begich, for himself and others, proposes an amendment number 1114. At the end of subtitle E of Title III, at Mr. The President, I ask a waive of the reading. Without objection. Uh, Mr. President, I uh, ask consent that the current amendment be set aside for one more. Uh, Is there objection? Senate. Without objection, the clerk will report. M m let me give you the number. <laughs> <laughs> Senate Bill uh, Amendment Number 1149. Senator from Alaska, Mr. Begich, proposes an amendment number 1149. At the end of subtitle C of Title Mr. President, I ask the waiving of the reading. Without objection. Mr. President, uh, I yield the floor. Senator from Maryland. Uh, Mr. President, if there's no one else that is, wishes to offer an amendment at this time, I was going to make a brief. 
I understand the Senator from New Hampshire wishes to. Let me um, yield to the Senator from New Hampshire, if I might. Um, thank you, um, Senator, Senator Cardin. Mr. President, I ask unanimous consent to set aside the pending amendment and to call up Amendment Number 1120. Is there objection? Without objection, the clerk will report. Senator Mr. Hasher, Ms. Shaheen, for herself and others, proposes an amendment number 1120. At the end of subtitle B of Title VII, add the following. Section 714. Mr. President, I ask unanimous consent that the reading of the amendment be dispensed with. Without objection. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President. The Senator from Maryland. Mr. President, I, first let me uh, thank uh, Senator Levin and Senator McCain in regards to uh, the amendment uh, 1188, which was Hotels for Heroes. I'm going to be very, very brief. Hotel for Heroes follows on the uh, Hero Miles, a successful program where our wounded warriors are able to, to get their families together uh, using frequent flyer miles that are donated. I want to compliment my colleague in the House, uh, Congressman Rupersberger, for his work on that. This expands that program for hotel miles so that the family can use the donated hotel miles in order to have housing so they can visit their wounded warriors in our, at our um, uh, facilities. I want to comment very briefly on the other amendment that I filed, which is uh, Senate Amendment 1073 that I filed with Senator Mikulski. Uh, this amendment would prohibit the District of Columbia's National Guard from operating or expanding its Youth Challenge program in Anne Arundel County because there's already a better alternative in place. The D.C. National Guard currently partners with the Maryland National Guard to provide valuable service at-risk children through the Youth Challenge Program at Aberdeen Proving Grounds in Hartford County, Maryland. I have visited that site, and that's the site where I think it, it, it's logical to see an, a, an expansion. The problem with the Oak Hill facility, which is what this amendment deals with, is that it borders the National Security Agency. This is federal property located in the state of Maryland that is valuable for our national security. And in, in the 1920s, the District of Columbia got permission from Congress to place on that property, and I'm quoting from the authorizing language, it was a facility for, uh, for children they're feeble-minded. That's the exact quote from the authorization. Since that time, the district, without knowledge, constructed a juvenile detention facility. The purpose of this amendment is to say, look, we have a place where it should be. We shouldn't be using other federal land in the state of Maryland for expansions without working with the state and local officials. I hope that this amendment can get cleared, uh, but I wanted to explain the reason why I filed it, and I I thank the chair for your attention, and I thank the chairman and ranking member, and I yield the floor. Mr. President. The senator from Minnesota. Uh, Mr. President, the amendment I offered, uh, number 1197. Senator from, Mr. The senator from Minnesota has the floor. Would you like the floor? The senator from Arizona. I, I would just say that uh, we have, Senator from Maine, we, I thought we were going to go through the process of, of pending amendments before. We spoke. I think the senator's amendment is already pending. It, it is. I, I, I thought because sure. the senator from Maryland spoke to his amendment, I thought that process was over. I apologize. Not at all. It's no big deal at all. I just would, maybe the senator from Maine could make her Thank you. I yield to the senator, senator from Maine. The senator from Maine is recognized. Thank you. Thank you. I thank my colleagues, Mr. President. Yes. The, the senator from Michigan. I just want to thank the senator from Minnesota for his courtesy because he had no way of knowing that the senator from Maine was here to offer for her amendments. I just want to thank the senator. I'd like to thank the senator from Michigan for thanking me. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. President, now that everyone's properly recognized and thanked, I would ask unanimous consent that the pending amendment be set aside and I would call up to make pending on block Amendment number 1105, 1155, 1158, and 1180, which are at the desk. Without objection, the clerk will report on block.
The Senator from Maine, Ms. Collins, proposes on block amendments numbered 1105, 1155, 1158, and 1180. Thank you, Mr. President. I thank the ranking member and chairman and the Senator from Minnesota. Mr. President, the Senator from Oklahoma. Yes, the Senator's consent to set the pending amendment aside for the purpose of uh, consideration of Ten amendments in block, and I will read these. Number 1094, 1095, 1096, 1097, 1098, 1099, 1100, 1101, 1102, and 1093. Is there objection? Without objection, the clerk will report on block. Senator from Oklahoma, Mr. Inhofe, proposes un on block amendments numbered 1094, 1095, 1096, 1097, 1098, 1099, 1100, 1101, 1102, and 1103. Ask Mr. Dispense with the reading. Without objection. I yield the floor. Mr. President. Senator from Minnesota. Uh, Mr. President, the uh, amendment I offered, number 1197, will help small businesses. Small businesses often serve as subcontractors or suppliers to large corporations that have a primary government contract. My amendment would help guarantee that small businesses get paid by these large corporations in a timely way. More specifically, my amendment would require the Office of Management and Budget to issue regulations in the next year to do this. This amendment sounds simple. There's a reason for that. It is. It is something that we can do here today that will offer real and significant help for small businesses. It's going to offer predictability and certainty to them. Anyone who owns a small business will tell you that they can't hire more people or plan for the future if they don't know when their next paycheck is coming. Getting their money more predictably and more quickly will enable them to make investments that they need to grow, thrive, and hire more people. The administration has recognized that small businesses are the engine that drives our economy. According to the U.S. Census Bureau, small businesses create a, an overwhelming majority of all new jobs. Small businesses are also responsible for producing half the private sector GDP. Given this, it makes sense that uh, we need to figure out how to make sure that small businesses are getting paid on time. OMB recognizes this and just issued a new policy statement that will require all federal agencies to make payments to their small business contractors within 15 days of receiving an invoice. But the fact is, a lot of small business, uh, businesses serve as subcontractors uh, to direct prime contractors. It only makes sense that we should require our large prime contractors to play by the same rules that we play by and to pay their suppliers in a timely manner. When Congress passed the Prompt Payments Act back in 1983, it recognized that the federal government need to lead by example and that we should be paying all of our contractors in no more than 30 days after the contractor sent an invoice our way. Congress went back in 1988 to create an obligation on construction contractors that they pay their suppliers within seven days of the government paying them. But no other contractors were under the same common sense obligation. I think that's a mistake that we should correct, especially as we are pouring billions and billions of government dollars into contingency operations overseas and all sorts of other projects that have nothing to do with construction. All suppliers working with these contractors deserve to be paid on time, and I am hoping one day we can tackle this problem for all subcontractors, not just small businesses that are subcontractors. But for now, my amendment takes a modest approach and focuses on the biggest problem, creating certainty and predictability for small business subcontractors. 
The National Federation of Independent Businesses recently conducted a survey and they found that nearly 40% of firms reported that receivables are coming in at a slower pace. I've heard stories from companies that have not been paid in 90 days or 120 days after being invoiced, uh, or after they've invoiced. This is unacceptable. These sorts of delays affect cash flow for these small businesses and make it tough for these businesses to meet payroll obligations and pay their other basic bills like their rent. I, I just want to tell a personal story that just relates to small businesses and how important this is to them just to be paid on time or how important cash flow is. My uncle, Lionel Kuntz, was a small businessman. He died in 1994 and I went to his funeral and at the funeral a number of his business associates, people who supplied him, he made fabric, he made quilting. People who supplied him and people whom he supplied, one after another got up and testified to how quickly he paid. Or how if they couldn't pay on time, that he would cut them some slack. That's how important this is. That's how important it was to them. My uncle was a mensch. It was a big deal. It was a big deal. These guys got up and all talked about this. This is what we should do. We should do for these small business subcontractors. Just make sure they get paid on time. That's all. This is a sensible a simple solution, Mr. President, to a real problem that small businesses are confronting. And I urge my colleagues to support me in this effort. Uh, I thank, thank you, and I yield the floor. Mr. President. The Senator from Oklahoma. I ask you unanimous consent that my defense fellow, uh, Major Kevin Hadley, be given floor privileges during the consideration of this bill. Without objection. Suggest the absence of a quorum. Clerk will call the roll. Chicago.